Ja, guten ja, Morgen wollte ich schon sagen. Uh, es ist guten Abend. But please allow me to switch to English now, because I was told that even though this um, session was supposed to be in German, we may have some people in here uh, who do, don't speak German, but we have a very international audience coming into the room right now. Therefore, my first question for you will be, well, are you okay with my doing this in English? I think I can get feedback via the chat while the participants are flowing in. So as long as I don't get any objection, um, oh, uh, English is not good for me, please do it in German. I will mercilessly continue in English. Also hier vielleicht auch nochmal der Hinweis auf Deutsch. Ich wurde gebeten, die Sitzung ähm, auf Englisch zu machen, nicht auf Deutsch, aufgrund einiger Teilnehmer, die im Englischen einfach besser sind. Ich hoffe, dass das für Sie okay ist. Ich hoffe auch, dass es für Sie okay ist, dass Sie zwar meinen Computer sehen, aber mich nicht. Aber ja, hübscher aussehen und interessanter als ich sind auf alle Fälle die Anwendung äh, Studio 21 und Estel Trados live. Ich Okay, and yeah, I'm getting feedback. Yes, yes, sure. So I don't see any objection. I see lots of okays. So let's keep this in English from this moment forward. So my name is Zia Chama. I'm working as a freelancer for SDL. Actually, I used to be in Trados development a long time ago, but about, well, over 10 years ago, I decided to freelance as a Trados trainer, consultant, um, freelance developer, and so on. And I have the pleasure of showing you Studio 21 and Trados Live. Again, you don't see me, you see the application, which looks much nicer than I do. And um, I, the problem is I'm having trouble with my webcam because I'm working on a Mac computer. But as you know, Studio runs on Windows only. So this is why I have to use a virtual machine on my Mac computer and somehow the webcam doesn't really work here. So what is um, so interesting about Studio 21? A few uh, minor things that I would like to show to you. First of all, I hope that you can see my project list, which is quite comprehensive. And in this list, I have, I call them traditional projects that you just create on your local PC. And Studio 21 supports the concept of cloud projects. So those are the projects that have this little blue cloud-shaped icon. So SDL Trado Studio 21, that's the big new topic, um, is internet savvy and it's cloud savvy. So instead of creating projects locally on your hard drive, you can put all the data, memories and so on into the cloud. But before I show this to you, maybe a few little things here and there. Some people, they have a very long list of projects. Actually, one of my customers, he had like 3000 projects in the list. And if you want to identify a particular project, there is this little text box in here. And you can type in a name of the project or part of the name, and then the list will collapse to show, for example, this particular project. The same is true when you double click a project and see the files herein. Then what you're seeing is a list of files and you can, for example, also single out a specific file by entering the name of this file or part of the name, and then you can zero in on this particular file. So these are little nice things, but I know some uh, customers, they have a, la a large number of files. Actually, my record holder has 21,000 files in just one project then you can easily single out a file. And there are performance uh, enhancements. So when I, for example, have a very big file or I open a lot of files at the same time, like I'm doing now, um, sometimes you have trouble with performance and when you scroll down and you want to split or merge segments in a document that has loads of files, then the computer was slow. So SDL made a lot of performance enhancements so that you can jump uh, to particular segments, that you can split particular segments. So do these kinds of operations. So I right click and I split 
and then I confirm. And in previous versions of uh, SDL Trado Studio, you sometimes saw the application gray out and then there was a wheel spinning and then you had to wait, maybe even get a cup of coffee, but now it's reacting instantaneously. Okay, and another nice thing is we enhanced the previews. For example, here I jumped um, ahead to a PowerPoint slide set and I can go to the preview and there are now interactive previews directly in studio, not only for Word, but also for PowerPoint and for Microsoft Excel. So I'm just generating the preview for this um, PowerPoint slide set. And it's going to take a few seconds because there are lots of pictures and they will be shown like this. So in previous versions, you had to open PowerPoint and maybe move PowerPoint to a second screen. And then you had the PowerPoint synchronized with your studio editor, but now it's embedded. And it's even synchronized segment by segment, not slide by slide, segment by segment. So you can preview your translation directly in this interactive uh, preview window. Um, the same, as I said, is true for Microsoft Excel. I'm just mentioning this briefly. I'm not showing this explicitly because we still have a lot of other things to discuss. One thing that you might also like in Studio 21 is the enhanced display filter, or shall I rather call it the enhanced enhanced display filter because we enhanced it three years ago with Studio 2017 but we got a lot of feedback from people who said, isn't there, for example, a way to show segments within a certain fuzzy range? Yes, this is possible. It is possible to do that. So if I go to segment, to the segment tab, then I can say, show me all the segments in the range of 70 to 85%. You have this down here and previously you could only say show me all the fuzzy matches but you couldn't say show me a specific fuzzy match range. I could go on talking about this until the cows come home literally but um, just teasing a few features you can for example search only for split or merged segments if you want to see whether you deviated in some places from the default segmentation. Are there any merged segments inside? I can check for this. Yes, there is a merged segment. I see it right here. Um, you can also say, show me segments with tags or show me segments that were last modified by Peter, for example, or last modified the day before yesterday. So there are really, I think, a gazillion different options. One thing that I really like, I would quickly want to show this one to you, is you can search for specific segment colors. Um, I think you might have had customers who told you, um, well, um, I have marked a lot of strings in red or blue or yellow. Please don't touch those. I'm not going to pay for them. This used to be very complicated to exclude, exclude strings based on a specific color. But with the um, display filter, you can, for example, say, show me all the gray segments. So those with the color gray. And then you can, as I did, lock them and then exclude them from the analysis result. But as I said, I'm only teasing this. I'm not going into detail because otherwise I could spend the next 45 minutes doing only that. And yeah, let me just close this um, document or rather this merge document. And move to another topic, which I've been teasing to you, the cloud project. That's really the big new theme that you can go into the cloud with um, Studio. And the trick is here. Um, I click browse and I can select one or several files and then I can do this. So the create new project button has two options. You can create a local project. This is the traditional approach. Yeah? The traditional approach means you create the project files and process them on your hard disk. Or 
Studio doesn't do anything on your local PC. Studio uploads to a cloud, I call it cloud drive. You know this a bit maybe from OneDrive, Dropbox, um, but uh, the SDL cloud is not only a file storage, it also has the intelligence to analyze uh, pre-translate files. And you can do this from Studio. Or you can do this from the web browser. So when you are logged into your SDL cloud account, then you will see this. So what I'm going to show to you next, I will have to alternate between Studio and the Trados Live website, which is part of the language cloud offering of SDL. And when you buy Studio 21, you have um, a free account for one year. It's a personal cloud uh, account. And you have the choice to store your memories not only on the hard disk, you can put it into the cloud. You might now say, why? Yeah, my translation memory and terminology files, they feel pretty good on the hard disk. But well, what happens if you have a hard disk crash? Then you might say, mm, I should have a backup. Yeah, But it's the same adage as with the um, photos on your smartphone. Um, when you shoot, for example, 100 photos and you lose the smartphone, the smartphone is gone. But you get a new smartphone, you log into your iCloud account, for example, and the photos are all back. So you have full device independence. So depending on whether you're sitting in front of a TV screen, a smartphone, a tablet, a PC, the data synchronizes and everywhere you go, you have your data with you. And this uh, principle can be applied a bit to uh, translation memories and term bases. So when I go to resources, I can click on translation memories. And there's one translation memory here, a sample memory that I created. And I proved to you it's really a memory because for the first time I can see translation memory content in a web browser. And as I said, if I now put a hammer, take a hammer and smash my PC, the PC is gone, but the data will remain in the cloud. And this is also where it's going to be backed up. So it's not your responsibility to make sure you have uh, backup drives that you put in a closet or under your mattress. The cloud takes care of the backup. So this is a memory in the cloud. And you can create memories in the cloud by clicking the button new translation memory. Then you give it a name, cloud TM. You select a location. A location is a bit like a folder on a hard disk. Here, for example, you see customers, test kunde, Zia test kunde. So you can create folders and subfolders so that if you have 500 memories, you don't put them all into the same folder you can structure. Let me just put this into the root folder. Then you define a source language. English, okay, lots of English variants, let's say America, and the target language is German. And I'm not going to talk about the other options right now. There's a lot more. You can define segmentation rules and so on. I'm not going to do this right now. I'm just going to create the translation memory. And here you see the cloud TM. It's empty. On the right hand side, you see I have zero, zero units. But I can import an SDL TM file or a TMX file. So I can take my file based translation memory. Okay, here I have one or two memories. Yeah, let's take this one. Then I click finish and the SDLTM file will be uploaded into the cloud. This should go quick because uh, it's a small memory. When you have a longer memory, you can just shut down your PC and wait because everything is happening in the cloud. Nothing goes on on your computer. And this is the proof. The proof is in the pudding. When you open the memory, you see the segments that have been uploaded. 
And instead of a file memory, as I said, you can use those cloud-based memories. You can share them. That's the idea of the team edition of uh, Charters Life, that people that are geographically distributed can share a common memory. What is true for translation memories is true for term bases. I would like to tease this one to you. So instead of having an SDLTB file that resides on my hard disk, I have this. I think that's easy to guess what this is. So when I search a term like Rechtschreibung, so I get the hits instantly. I can create new entries. Um, for example, I can create an, a German entry uh, and then add the English term. Oh, I think I misclicked. No, no problem. So I call up the newly created entry again. I add a language. And I add the term. Of course, you can um, create term bases with pictures, with definitions, cross references, all the bells and whistles. I'm not going to do this. Otherwise, I will spend the rest of the session on cloud terminology. Suffice it to say, if you have file based term bases, you can upload them as well to the cloud. So you upload the XML export from multi term, or you can even upload uh, Excel based glossaries, and then you get a cloud term base that you can share with colleagues. So rather than sending them all the time, um, the term base files, for example, once per week or once per month, um, everybody has live real time access to the cloud term base. How about the projects? As I said, you can centralize not only memory data, terminology data, you can also centralize well, the projects. And you can create projects, as I mentioned from here, from studio. When you have a non-PC device, like an iPad Pro or even a smartphone, you can create the projects also from a non-PC device, um, from the web browser, for example. As I need studio, I have to do this presentation on a Windows uh, virtual machine. Otherwise, I could have done the um, presentation directly from my Mac OS X. But because I need studio, well, I had to create the projects here on a Windows virtual machine. And you can create a project, as I said, from the web browser. Um, I'm going to call it Cloud Project Test. Then you define the due date, for example, 24th of November. Okay, 1850 is a bit late. Let's say 10 o'clock and you indicate where do you want the project uh, to be created in which folder. So you have folders, for example, per customer so that you don't mix projects for customer A with projects for customer B. And then you define the source language and the target language or languages. So German should be my target language. Of course, I can pick multiple target languages just like in studio. I'm not going to do this to make this exercise um, fast, simple and painless. And then I'm going to upload, let's say at least one file. Uh, which file am I going to take? just a small one so that I don't have a lot of typing work. Really, this is a really a small one and only one. So there can be multiple files. Then you select what we call a translation engine. This is a new concept for you. We never have had a translation engine as a concept in studio before. An engine is a box that contains useful linguistic resources. Translation memories, machine translation, and term bases. These three types you can put together into what we call uh, um, a translation engine. Because we have seen that those th uh, three resources, they work together. So if nothing has been found in a TM, the system will ask the machine translation system, hey, do you have a solution? 
uh, I'm getting a lot of questions like, is this mandatory? No, you can also leave out um, the machine translation system. Sure. You can also have multiple memories in this engine or multiple term bases. That's up to you. So you're free to add any TM to this engine that you want. Then we have what we call a workflow. I will just define a standard workflow. This might be a bit more interesting now for translation agencies uh, that have to do teamwork and assign work to translators and reviewers. So I'm going through this quite quickly because for freelance translators, this might not be that interesting. Suffice it to say, all the processing will be done in the cloud. So the conversion of, for example, Word into SDLXLIF or InDesign to SDLXLIF, then the translation memory matching, which is basically the pre-translation. When you find matches in a memory, they will be inserted. And if nothing has been found in the memory, then we do a machine translation, in this case, based on the STL neural machine translation. But again, I emphasize you can exclude this task. So you can say, please don't do this. My customer doesn't want me to do any cloud-based uh, machine translation, so you can leave it out. Then there is the analysis. You know what this is. This is the report. And after this, um, the translation task is assigned and the linguistic review is assigned. Here, I'm doing everything sort of in personal union as if I were a standalone freelancer, but you can say, okay, Tom is going to do the translation and Rudy is going to do the review work. But to simplify things, I'm doing everything on my own. And in the browser, you can even configure those itsy bitsy settings like, for example, the QA checker. So you can, for example, configure the project to use um, punctuation checks, check for multiple spaces. I pre-configured all of this so that I don't have to explain every box. So many of you might know that in Trados you have this QA checker that identifies words that you shouldn't use, that identifies punctuation mistakes, repetition mistakes, and so on. So all of this can be configured in the cloud. And then I click on create and start. And then I need to wait for the cloud to prepare the project file or files. You see that the cloud project test has been added to my list of projects. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to cancel this. In the meantime, I would like to, well, first of all, I need to wait, yeah because um, all of these steps, they require time. So I'm going to the task history where I can see what has already been done. So for example, the translation memory matching, it has been done and the machine translation is currently in progress. What I originally wanted to show to you, which I think it's not working, unfortunately, I don't know why this morning it was working, was our Trados Live app. So while this is um, processing on the cloud in the background, I'm trying whether I can do this, show you what I have on my iPhone. Because we have a smartphone app for Android and iOS. You can download it and there is a app, an app that is freely available in the Android store and in the Apple store. And here you can, um, download the Trados Live app. But as I said, there's really a glitch here today with my webcam and with my iOS. Um, yeah, suffice it to say there is a Trados Live app and you can track the project from your smartphone and you can also create projects from your smartphone. So when you're standing in line in front of the supermarket and you have nothing to do, you can accept jobs from the smartphones, you can create projects and so on, but of course you can't translate. That goes without saying you can't translate. So while I was mentioning the Trados Live app, um, everything has been prepared. So all the things that would usually run on your desktop are running in the cloud. And now let's pretend I'm the translator. 
now I can accept or reject the task. Okay, since I'm doing everything on my own, I will accept, of course, my own task. And if I refresh, I have a lot of options now. I can either do the translation in the online editor, so in the browser directly. I can also open it in Studio. Okay, and you can download a package. So doing it in the browser means you need to have internet connection. Doing it in Studio means you also have to have an internet connection because the memories and the term bases, they're in the cloud. They are not on your local hard disk. And if you now say, I need to take the train from Munich to Düsseldorf, it's five hours train ride, mostly without a good internet connection. Then you can download the package, do the translation offline, but unfortunately without the ability to Google or to consult the memories. Um, but you can at least do typing work and then you can upload the package once you're back. Since this is now a bit uncool in the 21st century, I will do the translation in the online editor. It's also possible to switch between online editor and studio. So once I was on the road only with my iPad, so I was doing some part of the translation in the online editor. And then when I was back home, I was doing the rest of the translation in studio. So most of you know how to translate in studio, but some of you might never have seen this online editor. So it's studio in the browser. And as you can see, I have a match from the memory and the other segments have been pre-processed by the machine translation system. Um, this editor also has let me just see in the view, a document preview, just like in studio. So when I go through this, der Recht, so this is a mistake, die Rechtschreibprüfung bietet Unterstützung für Fremdsprachen, etc. And you might have noticed once I start typing. Yeah. It's so real time that even while you're typing, um, the preview updates. And I can even use the same keyboard shortcuts as in studio. So control enter to confirm. Now let me just close the preview because it's taking quite some space. So I will disable the preview. Some people were saying, where do I see the translation memory matches? I see them here on the uh, right hand side, but this window for lookups we don't call it TM window, it's a lookups window. It can be expanded and it shows matches from the terminology database and also matches from the translation memory. I'm going to do this quick and painless. I won't be giving you a blow by blow description of the online editor because that alone could be a training in itself. I rather um, say it's complete. So I complete the task and I click complete task and then it's uploaded. So the project is, uh, or rather the file is uploaded and it's going for the linguistic review. So let me just quickly go back to studio. Um, okay, here the full project list is not visible because I have the name of a project entered here. And I would like to switch back to studio just to show to you the good old studio is not um, sort of uh, outdated. It's still there because um, customer surveys showed us that at least 90% of SDL Trotter's customers said we want to be able to work also on the desktop. It's not good enough for us to be always in the cloud, to be always in a web browser. We want a client like studio. And this Studio 21 is talking to the cloud and it has also noticed, oh, there is a cloud project test. So it pops up in Studio. And when I double click this project, I see the translated file. And if for some reason I say, I would like to do the review in Studio and not in a web browser, 
I can, of course, do this. I get the notification window on the right hand side and I say, yes, I want to continue working in studio. For some reason, I'm doing um, the review work in here. The online editor, by the way, is also great for reviewing. You can track changes, you can apply comments. But just to show to you, you have the best of both worlds. I'm doing this in studio proper. Die Rechtschreibprüfung bietet eine, yeah, let's say, just for the sake of changing something, eine hervorragende Unterstützung für Fremdsprachen. And you can also add comments. This is my comment. So I'm not going to delve too deeply into this because you know exactly um, how the story goes. Then the reviewer finishes working on this and then the reviewer also has a complete task button. Yes, I want to mark the project as complete. And then the reviewer sort of says, I approve of the translation or I sort of reject it. This means I don't like what you did. Please have a look at my corrections and um, apply the necessary changes. Then I can throw it back to the translator. Please take a look at my comments and changes. So all in all, um, Trados Studio has become, as you can see, cloud aware, more internet aware. And that also manifests in other parts of the application. It's not only the translation, it's other parts like um, here. So when you go to the help menu, we have direct link to things like SDL forums. So on the forums, you can ask questions. And here you see the current forum topics. This is now not language cloud. This is just the SDL community because in previous versions, you had to go to the web browser and Google the SDL community and then log in when you wanted to ask a question. Now you can go to the SDL community directly by clicking a button in SDL Trotter Studio. For example, there is something quite scientific on regex and XPath. And if you want to take a look at all the articles, then you can jump to um, the community. The rest is now displayed in the web browser and you can search the communities. Okay, I need to accept cookies. And then you can ask a question by clicking the new button. And then you can say, yeah, I allow, um, can you help, or let's put it in a shorter way, rec x expression needed for QA checker. And then the community tries to find out maybe there is an article yeah, on this one that other people had maybe the same problem. And then you can pick the article and jump to it. Or you say, no, I don't see anything. I want to put in a new query. And then you can, for example, say, I need a regex for date formats like um, 2020 and so on. I'm not going to um, put this question live, otherwise people will see it and say, oh, Ziad uh, is in need of this, so I don't want to alert anybody that I don't know how to resolve this problem. So this is one thing. You have direct access to, to the community and something which I find even much, much greater is the App Store. So everybody loves the App Store because uh, when I visit customers, they have their three, five, ten um, most favorite apps. And they need to go to the App Store, the website, then log in, then search for the app, then download the app, then accept the license agreement, then install the app. And after installing, it becomes available. And when there is a new update, an update of the app available, you have to go through this rigmarole again and again. And now the App Store is more like the App Store of Apple or Android. Here, for example, I see my four apps that I've installed. And this little number here, it indicates whether I have apps that require an update. 
it's zero because there is no update for deep L subtitling, etc. But you notice from the iPhone, you see this red number eight where you select update all and then the updates run in the background and you don't have to do anything. The App Store is right here. So there is no uh, need to go to the website. You can do this, but if you ever heard uh, of an app that you might like, like SRX format. Okay, there's nothing for this one available, but I think there are apps Word. So I enter the first um, letters of the app that I want to look up and then the App Store comes up with a file type definition for WordFast with the MS Word Grammar Checker and so on, WordBird. And if you say, okay, that's an app, the grammar checker, I really want to have it. Then you can click on the download button and then the app will be downloaded and installed. The only thing I can't save you from is a restart. So that one is still required for Trados to um, finish the installation, a restart of the application. I'm don't want to restart because this would now take time again and I only have a few minutes left. Therefore, I pre-installed an app that I really like and it has become available for Studio 21. It's um, this app for highlighting words. How often did you want to do this here? I think very often. And the word light gives you this capability. You can apply different colors. And with our great advanced, advanced display filter, you can filter for those colors later if you want to single out those highlighted segments. Yeah, then you can do what I'm doing here. So this is really a great app. I, I love it. So this is one of those apps that I always install when I get a new studio version. Okay, so you saw there is more, more cloud and internet uh, interactivity between Studio and um, the internet. So based on what you see on the App Store, the community, the cloud and so on. I don't want to withhold from you little um, improvements here and there. And maybe this is going to be the last improvement that I'm going to show to you. The cloud memories and the file-based memories, they allow you to finally customize date and time formats. Let me create this project as a local project so you will see what I mean. So I'm loading a PowerPoint file that is supposed to go from British English into German. Then I'm going to create a translation memory. Um, let me create a fresh memory because that's a bit better, fresh memory. Um, that's easier. So I call it test GB, GBD. And cloud memories as well as file-based memories have a load of loads of new options. So you have always been able to define abbreviations and variables, ordinal followers and segmentation rules. Now you can also customize formats for dates, times, numbers, measurements, currencies. I'm not going to do this because I want to show you the problem that you might all have had when translating with Studio. I'm going to one particular segment, this one. So the date formats are not recognized because this is an American format and the project goes from British into German. And then we got a question, yeah, we have British texts, but our British authors, they are using US date formats. And well, I can cobble together the dates by inserting the numbers like this, but this is not too handy. And finally, you can customize, as I said, um, file memories and memories on the cloud by changing the language resources. So I can teach British to recognize an American date. We have more date formats than ever before, by the way. And you can define your customized date by picking the little bits and pieces from this list. 
but I feel daring. I think I can type the format myself, month, day, comma, year. So this is what it looks like. So I can teach the memory to recognize this format and on the fly, on the fly, it recognizes the dates and I can use control comma to insert the dates. I'm not going to show all the flavors like times and numbers and so on. I know there are some customers from Switzerland who, for example, say, yes, for thousand separators in German, we are using dots. Yeah. So this is common, but for some reason we want to do it like the French, use a space so you can customize this any way you want. The only thing that is a bit irksome here is the fact that we see the, yeah, the name of the day of the week. This is also something that we can remedy. We go into the memory and we can resolve this on the memory level um, not on the project settings level, you can do it there as well. But if you do it in a memory, it stays there forever, not only for this project, but for any project that you are doing, that you are uh, processing with this memory. Then this is a German quirk. And what I can do, I see this extremely long date and I just put it into the trash bin. Then it's gone and it will never bother me again. So the next time I am inserting dates, you see the name of the day of the week is no longer there. I know this is a little technicality, but we got a lot of feedback from customers during WebEx presentations who said, oh, finally, I can do this. Finally, I can adapt number settings and so on. Yeah, I've, I'm almost at the end of the training. Um, just a little side note, the fact that I was able to do everything like this in the App Store, on the language cloud, in the community is due to the fact that I put my login here. So after installing Studio, I got my SDL Trotters Live login. And with this login, I'm instantly connected to the App Store, to the language cloud, to all my SDL resources. Yeah, I think I have one or two minutes left. Um, let me just close this. Um, yeah, you can save it. We have minor enhancements, just um, to mention this at the end. We have enhanced the Word, PowerPoint and Excel file types, as I said, to have this new interactive preview, which is also available in the language cloud in the online editor. We even have a few new formats. So there's the email format, for example, that allows me to open uh, email messages directly. So you don't need to go to Outlook and copy paste the email message into Word and then do a project on the Word document and paste back to Outlook. Email formats from Thunderbird, Outlook, MacMail, etc., can be um, processed directly in Studio. So also on this front, there have been a few improvements. But I'm not going to show this in detail because this would be another kettle of fish. Well, I think I hit the 45 minutes mark. So I was asked not to go over this to give my the other speakers some time to log in and to prepare. Um, then I thank you very much for your attention. Um, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you as well. Um, then I wish you have a nice evening and a good weekend. Oh, okay, here I see uh, some feedback. Yes, of course, I have been doing this in German all the time. And yes, uh, so you go to user interface language in the view menu, then you see all the languages that can be used in Studio. And Language Cloud has exactly the same thing. Yeah, you see it here. And if you go to our website, sdl.com, um, it has also different languages that I uh, quickly wanted to show to you. I think it's in English. So when you go to Deutsch, you will see pertinent information for the German market, especially the events. 
So we are having um, WebEx meetings or WebEx presentations on new things and so on on a regular basis. And you can go to your um, events website and uh, of STL and look for other events. And by the way, I'm sorry, I can't show this on my iPhone. There's even in the app store of Apple and Android, not only an SDL Charters Live app, but also an app for SDL events. So if you download this for free, you can um, take a look at all current and upcoming or past events. All right, then I think I'm going to stop um, my sharing. And wish you a nice evening and a good weekend.